Today I'm gonna to show you how I do my purfling on my guitars. I've got this resin. You guys have seen the resin tables where they pour the resin in between the two uh, slabs, right? This is basically the same stuff. Uh, the only thing different is they pour it into a mold. I cut sheets out of these things. I'll resaw them on my bandsaw, cut sheets, and then I can cut them up and do different inlays of different kinds. So in this particular video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use it as the purfling. Now I've already got this guitar to the stage where it's ready for the binding and the purfling. Everything is closed up. I've got my end graft in and uh, we've got the rosette done. And the rosette has uh, a combination of wood and resin inlaid into it, as well as the, the end graft, right? So I figured it'd be kind of a cool thing to, to wrap this purfling around the edge, okay? So I'm gonna, just gonna show you a little bit. This is kind of what it'll look like. I've got the binding here and then the purfling. It'll be the blue on the black. It'll be very subtle. It's not gonna be um, something that's gonna pop really, really heavy, but it'll be really classy. Let's go ahead and get to it and I'll show you how I do it. Before I can cut the purfling or the binding channels, we need to prepare the sides. They have to be perfectly flat. This is basically the foundation of a good binding job. My go-to tool for this job is the Elevate rolling pin sander. This particular one is a version two. I have them both, but I really like this one. It uses PSA sandpaper that comes in rolls. So it's a little easier to work with than the, the traditional sanding sleeves. I think that's an improvement. Okay, now we get to the fun part. We get to start cutting some channels. I'm gonna start with the purfling channel. To do this, I'm using the Ultimate Binding Jig from Elevate. This is literally one of my favorite new tools. It's a huge improvement over the way I used to do things. Until recently, I was using the old traditional binding tower with a carriage that carried the body underneath the router. It worked well enough, but it was cumbersome and clunky and in all reality, it took a lot of time to set it up just right. I also struggled with getting consistent depths for the binding with that particular jig that I had. One of the biggest improvements is the real estate. Uh, the old style just took up a lot of room and it was a permanent fixture on one of my benches. With the Elevate Ultimate Binding Jig, I can actually just put it in a drawer or in a cupboard somewhere, pull it out when I need it, and it's light and small and compact, and it's just an incredible improvement over my old processes. I do recommend checking out their website. I'll put a link in the description. They do have some pretty amazing tools. You know, at this point, it, it's really fun to think about what this guitar is actually going to be used for. Sometime in the near future, somebody's going to pick this thing up and strum the strings, and it's going to make a beautiful sound. And what are they going to use it for? Are they going to lift others with it? Are they going to write a song that provides healing for somebody? Those are really the things that make it all worth it. All right, this part of the job can get pretty messy. And I have to admit, I've glued myself to all several parts of guitars. <laughs> uh, we've actually come up with a pretty funny term. Um, you know, you get all that CA glue on your fingertips. You can't feel anything. Uh, as a result, sometimes you might drop something. Uh, we lovingly call that mannequin hands.
I know people do things in different ways. For me, I like to cut the purfling channel and glue it in first, then cut the binding channel, skimming just a little bit of that purfling away, making a clean binding channel. So the tape I use is that clear plastic with the strings in it, uh, packaging tape. I think it's fiberglass filament. It's really strong stuff and I've never had it snap on me or break on me like I have with masking tape. It also holds really, really strong. Um, you have to actually be careful with it. I, I spray lacquer on the body and the sides before I bind. And that way I'm not going to pull fibers of, of, you know, some of the wood fibers up as I, as I pull the tape off. All right, so now that we got the top done, uh, we're going to wash, rinse, repeat for the back. And I'm going to do that off camera. Thanks for watching.